for the weekend. He wants to abolish Medicare. And I think, you know, abolishing Medicare, I don't think you're going to get away with that one. Carson says he'd reduce poverty to make Medicare unnecessary, and he'll defend himself in the debate, as staffers say, but remain low-key. You know, some people think that he's laid back. I don't think that there are very many people think, um, that think that he's too laid back to be president. I think that people really, really appreciate his temperament. But the front runners and the eight others at the debate seem sure to clash in the mellow foothills of Boulder. WSAZ News Channel 3, 6 o'clock. Next at 6, a close call for one driver today after his rig nearly falls off the interstate in a crash. A look at how it could have obviously turned out much worse. Plus, we are following a developing story in Ravenswood where a band director is arrested for what police say he did with a student. Your 6 o'clock news is just two minutes away. Jack Conway, he's too liberal. He's just too liberal. Way too liberal. He's just like Obama, maybe worse than Obama. Jack Conway's a career politician. He's the same liberal anti-coal policies. Let's get rid of career politicians. Kentucky deserves a fresh start. Matt Bevin is a conservative. Matt Bevin will always be a conservative. Matt Bevin's an outsider. He's not a politician. Matt Bevin is a Christian, a husband, and a father. And a veteran. I'm voting for Matt Bevin. I'm voting for Matt Bevin. We're voting for Matt Bevin. impaired in West Virginia, you break the law and endanger the lives of others. Law enforcement across the state is committed to keeping impaired drivers off the road. If you drive impaired, be prepared to pay the price. There are consequences. It's simple, West Virginia. Drive sober or get pulled over. Jason Moses. GMC delivers again with premium materials, purposeful design, and professional grade technology in every vehicle. Like the Sierra Pickup with no peer in its class, Sierra offers high-end interior craftsmanship and the latest technology. The all-new Yukon Denali offers the very best in full-size utility, spaciousness, luxury, and seating for up to nine. Moses GMC, just off the 29th Street exit of I-64, where Moses means more. Breaking news coverage, WSAZ News Channel 3. Elian, and we'll look at the forecast. And uh, rain for some events, like some of these outdoor events for trick or treat in advance, some of these fall things, it's never good, but it's something that we, I hate to say it, we need. Yeah, at, at the end of the day, we could use some rainfall. In fact, we have been seeing relatively dry conditions for much of October, and that's also been the case for the months leading into October as well. And it's important to note that we are in the height of the fall fire season. So let's take a look at what we are seeing, and you could see showers are sticking around but the good news is that the widespread activity that's in place right now will become more scattered and patchy into the night ahead temperatures will actually inch just slightly warmer as we head into the midnight as we pull into the upper 50s tomorrow watch for the risk of thunderstorms and strong gusty winds your six o'clock news starts right now WSAZ news channel three six o'clock a semi nearly careens over the side of a bridge in a crash that shut down 64 for six hours. You'll hear from the driver who's very grateful tonight. And more money coming from your pockets. The Public Service Commission listened to testimony today for why they should or should not approve a requested water raid hike. Good evening, I'm Tim Ear in Huntington. I'm Amanda Barron in Charleston. First tonight, a developing story out of Jackson County, West Virginia, where a band director is now accused of having an inappropriate relationship with a student. Police say the student was just 15 years old and the alleged relationship spanned over several months. News Channel 3's Andrew Colgrove is following this one for us. Andrew, investigators say this relationship happen happened on and off school grounds. 
Yeah, that's right, Amanda. That band director, 28-year-old Nathan Carruthers, was taken to jail last night. He was taken to the South Central Regional Jail. According to the criminal complaint, this all started when the parents of the 15-year-old girl looked at their phone bill and noticed that she and that band director had sent thousands of messages back to one another, and allegedly some of those messages were sexual in nature. Uh, some sexual photos had been exchanged between the two. The criminal complaint also says that the parents expressed concern that that teacher was giving private band lessons to their 15-year-old daughter when no one else was present. The criminal complaint also states that the girl told investigators that her relationship with the band director had become sexual in nature, and also that they had sent sexually explicit photos to each other. That student also, according to the criminal complaint, told investigators that she would sneak out of her parents' house late at night, that the band director would pick her up, and that they would go back to her place. Obviously, uh, uh, disturbing news for folks here in the Ravenswood community. I just talked with the president of the Band Boosters Club here at Ravenswood, who also has two female students in the band. She told me she was shocked by this. She says she spent a lot of time around Mr. Carruthers and never saw any indication that he had any uh, in a, in a, inappropriate behavior with any of the students. I can tell you, Tim and Amanda, that right now the band boosters are having a special meeting here at the school because of this. They say their main concern right now is to make sure that none of the other band students suffer because of this. All right, Andrew, thanks so much. And Andrew will have more on this story for us coming up tonight at 10 on the CW and at 11 right here on WSCZ. The president of West Virginia American Water took the stand today to answer questions regarding the company's request for a $35 million increase. And you'll pay it through a rate hike, which could mean you could see an increase to your monthly bill. WSAZ Charleston's Matt Heckle was at that hearing today. Matt, the company says this increase is necessary to pay for infrastructure improvements, and they've made those over the past four years. Yeah, that's right, Amanda. They also point to improvements they still plan on making over the next year, but opponents say they're concerned that this money won't go toward fixing the real problem of infrastructure. On Tuesday, West Virginia American Water President Jeff McIntyre spent the day on the hot seat. As you invest in our customer rates go up, they're directly talking answering questions regarding the company's request for a 28% water rate increase. Everything we spend uh, has an effect on the customer's bill. The company claims the $35 million increase is necessary to pay for $105 million worth of system improvements made since the last increase in 2012, as well as $98 million in projects planned through February 2017. The driver of this request is the capital investment, the investment that is needed for our infrastructure. West Virginia American Water Water spokesperson Laura Jordan says the company works to make sure the rate is affordable to the customer while providing the necessary improvements. But we are demonstrating to our customers that we are making the investments. We seek to continue to make these investments and we need rates reflected to do so. The vast majority of the $35 million they're asking for um, is projected future expenses and we don't know whether they'll actually be expended or what they'll be expended for and we think there need to, needs to be some controls on those issues. Which is why consumer advocate Jackie Roberts is recommending a much lower 1.8 million dollar increase. Our goal in this case is to encourage the company to invest in infrastructure and repair its systems so that customers have safe and adequate service. Well, if the PSC does approve that 28% increase, it'll mean residents pay about $12 more on their monthly water bill. The increase, however, Amanda, will not go into effect until February. All right. Thanks, Matt. Now, this hearing is expected to last until the end of this week. We'll keep you posted. West Virginia American Water's last rate increase took effect in October of 2013. That was a $2.77 monthly average increase compared to the 28% increase they're asking for now. That one was only 6.7%. The initial requests were for a 20% hike. So obviously there is a little back and forth that happens during these hearings. One man is facing charges tonight after trying to sing Justin Bieber songs at two different schools today. This morning, Delante Lewis somehow gained access to Dunbar Middle School. Police say that's when he walked in the front office demanding to sing Justin Bieber songs on the intercom system at the school. Dunbar police recall they took Lewis to Thomas Memorial Hospital. He was also cited for simple possession of marijuana. This afternoon, South Charleston police say that Lewis also caused a disturbance at the Kitty College at the First Church of the Nazarene on Kentucky Street. South Charleston police arrested him and charged him with two misdemeanors, trespassing and disorderly conduct.
Mango Central High School was placed on lockdown this morning. According to Mango County Sheriff James Smith, on Monday, a student was told by another student that he had a gun in his shoe. The Sheriff's Department responded to the school. No weapons were found after a search. Well, this morning, several calls came into the school regarding Monday's incident. As a precaution, officers returned to the school and they held that short lockdown so they could have a search. Nothing was found. A former Kanawha County teacher will spend the next year behind bars. Jennifer Naper was sentenced today in federal court for signing a false statement and attempt to illegally buy a gun for her boyfriend who's a convicted felon. Now she'll spend one year and one day in prison. She's required to report for her sentence on December 4th. She faced 24 to 30 months, but the judge reduced her sentence for her cooperation and her lack of a criminal record. A woman from Logan County pleaded guilty to filing 43 fraudulent federal tax returns. 64-year-old Maria Martin of Chapmanville admitted that from 2011 through 2013, she claimed tax credits for clients to which they weren't entitled. Now, U.S. Attorney Booth Goodwin says Martin has agreed to pay more than $188,000 in restitution. She faces up to three years in prison and a fine of $250,000 when she's sentenced in February. Tomorrow will begin the 15th day of testimony in the trial of Don Blankenship, the former Massey Energy CEO. Today, the former president of Massey, Chris Blanchard, who ran the Upper Big Branch Mine, returned to the stand. They've been questioning him since Thursday, more than 17 hours of testimony at this point. Now, Blankenship's attorney asked Blanchard about mine citations and if they were a part of a conspiracy to violate safety regulations. Blanchard answered no each time. Blankenship is accused of conspiring to violate mine safety regulations before the 2010 Upper Big Branch mine disaster that killed 29 men. A few tears were shed this morning for a man who's soon to be retired from a job he held for a long time. West Virginia State Lottery Director John Musgrave took part in his last commission meeting today. Musgrave announced his retirement earlier this month. He's had the job at the lottery for 19 years under four different governors. When he took over in 1997, the lottery was bringing in $250 million a year. How about this? Now annual revenues are over $1.5 billion with a B. The staff honored Musgrave with a large signed fake check like he's presented to so many happy winners. If you had to drive through Huntington today, chances are pretty good you got caught in this traffic nightmare. It's all because the driver of that semi truck lost control and nearly crashed off a bridge on I-64. WSAZ Charleston's Brad Myers joins us now live in Huntington with the details. Amanda, investigators say this morning's downpour is playing a big role in causing this crash. But what's amazing is the fact that the driver of that semi was able to walk away despite nearly plunging off this bridge behind me. We did catch up with him shortly after the accident. He says he was tapping his brakes before entering the curve before the bridge and then lost control, started hydroplaning before crashing into the abutment of the old Miller Road overpass bridge. It's right here between Hal Greer and the 5th Street exits. The semi cab dangling over the edge of the bridge right there as it skidded along the bridge. The uh, uh, driver was somehow able to walk away without a crash, but he says it did take some time or it did take some help from a stranger to get free. Now you might be wondering what caused the interstate to be shut down for some six hours. Well, that was because there was diesel fuel leaking from the uh, semi here. They had to clean that up. They had to use Tide and even sprayed off the fuel with water from the fire department's hoses. Amanda, we did speak with Huntington Fire uh, Deputy Chief Jan Rader. She says this stretch of I-64 is somewhat of a dangerous area with several accidents really in just the past several years. All right, and you didn't hear from that uh, truck driver, but he said that somebody is watching out for him, that's for sure, because he has a lot of good luck. He's lucky tonight. His family's thankful, too. Brad, thanks. DOH workers say repair work will need to be made on the abutment of the bridge where the semi hit, but it's not known when that work will begin. Well, this week is all about promoting the prevention of substance abuse. The West Virginia National Guard hosted a Red Ribbon Awareness and Wellness Fair this morning in honor of Red Ribbon Week. Local law enforcement members and others who deal with the drug problem throughout our region were there to come up with solutions to this growing problem. One of their ideas is to go into the schools and act as mentors for students. 
show them that you know, hey, there's more out there than what you see on MTV or any of the other shows and programs that you know that I'm outdated on. But that you know, hey, if you make some wrong decisions and you do these things, it, you know, that takes away options. It takes away opportunities for you. And we want everyone to have, you know, you live in the land of the free. Take advantage of it. This morning's event also included a drug take back initiative for folks to drop off their old prescriptions for proper disposal. Serious discussion about the needs of those with disabilities was had today over lunch. The statewide independent living council and West Virginia centers for independent living hosted the brown bag community discussion today. This was an opportunity to talk about what people with disabilities need so they can let their abilities shine and what should be included in the next state plan for independent living. Now this group governs how federal and state independent living funds are sent spent rather to find out more information head on over to WSAZ mobile and WSAZ.com click on featured links we are quickly approaching Halloween and many neighborhood trick-or-treats start as early as tonight unfortunately according to a State Farm study trick-or-treat is the deadliest day for child pedestrian accidents WSAZ though has several tips though for you if you are driving through one of those areas or if you are taking your little ghouls and goblins out this week a lot of you will go out on Thursday be alert for children running in between parked cars avoid tailgating the car in front maybe following along with children also you Use your car's hazard lights to alert other drivers if you're dropping children off. Also, slow down in residential areas and really all over because so many children are out walking on Halloween. Also, encourage your child to carry a flashlight if they are trick-or-treating. Just helps everybody. Still ahead for you here at 6, a new study that's all too real for some families in our region. Why it's related to the growing drug epidemic. Next. Two things you can count on when it comes to severe weather. It can hit day or night. And the WSAZ First Warning Weather Team will make sure you're prepared for weather at its worst. No one can match the background, experience, and knowledge of the WSAZ First Warning Weather Team. Keeping your family safe with in-depth forecasts and weather alerts on air, online, and on your phone. WSAZ News Channel 3 First Warning Weather. The Toyota Model Year Closeout is on with impressive last chance savings at your West Virginia Toyota dealer. Remaining 2015 RAV4s have 750 cash back or buy one with 0% APR financing or cash in with first chance savings on new 2016 cameras with a low $179 a month lease or buy one with 1250 cash back or choose 0% APR plus 500 finance cash. See your West Virginia Toyota dealer and buy a Toyota.com for your best deals. Toyota, let's go places. Buy smart at iMart Express. They prove that quality glasses don't have to cost a lot. Two complete pairs start at just $38.71. And you can wear your glasses today. You just get more for your money. Buy smart at iMart Express. Our families are struggling. Health care costs have skyrocketed. Too many jobs have been lost. Our paychecks seem smaller, while career politicians make government bigger. But make no mistake, these policies are on the ballot. Every single one of them. Our families can't afford four more years of the liberal policies of President Obama and career politicians like Jack Conway. Can you really trust Obama and Conway to make things better? Buy smart at iMart Express. I got two pair with progressive lenses, and they were ready before I could finish my lunch. Two complete pairs with progressive lenses start at just $76.92. Buy smart at iMart Express. HD Dual Doppler Radar, brought to you by the Hands of Experience at St. Mary's Medical Center. First warning weather. Just past 6.15, you are looking live at the gloomy skies that drape the mid-Ohio Valley, viewed by our West Virginia Lottery weather cam. The lens in downtown Huntington pointed toward Westmoreland and CK, where the Autumn Fest Parade has been canceled for the night because of the rains. And those rains are in here from now till roughly 9 o'clock. After 9 o'clock, we'll see a break in the rain toward midnight. The temperature slowly creeping up. As the rains end, the winds will start getting down to ground level. We could have a windy night that rattles the window panes and sings the wind chimes. So the morning school bell temperature near 60. Showers are mainly just to the west. 
There'll be a shower or thunderstorm tomorrow morning. It's windy, and that midday gusty squall that comes through could have winds up to 40 miles an hour with a little pea-sized hail where it does occur. The afternoon will feature temperatures in the low 70s with partly cloudy skies and a leftover shower. Naturally, the rains and the winds will bring many a leave down tomorrow. Right now, the southeasterly winds are blowing lightly, but up in the clouds, they're blowing stoutly. So once the showers end, let's look for those winds to infiltrate the valley towns. Temperatures are stuck in the mid-50s from Celebration Station over to the Mountain Home Place in Paint Zone. With 92% humidity, we have a good surge of moisture on Doppler radar coming up the Big Sandy right now, about to enter the Kanawha and the Ohio River Valley. So the brief break in rain in the Charleston area is about to be gobbled up. Raining Huntington north toward Point Pleasant and Parkersburg and down into the coal fields. Some healthy rains in the Big Sandy Valley. But if you look to the southwest of Prestonsburg down toward the Daniel Boone, you can see We've got a nice drying slot. That'll be in here late evening. And once we dry out, as far as the rain's moving away temporarily, we'll bring those stronger winds down to earth. And in fact, north of this line is where we are right now. A lot of rain, but south of that, it's windy, it's humid, and there are sporadic showers. So I expect sporadic is the nature of the shower pattern tomorrow. Here's the drying late evening. First thing tomorrow morning for our school bell, mainly quiet. Those showers and thunder showers are to the west. They then come in here midday into the afternoon hours. And as those showers percolate into the mountains tomorrow afternoon, they could become quite strong, if not locally severe, into eastern West Virginia. And then here we go. The atmosphere dries out beginning tomorrow night with just a leftover shower early on Thursday morning. And trick-or-treat day and night looks to be mainly dry and cooler across our area. So let's pinpoint your forecast. A showery Tuesday night across the valley if you're shopping over at St. Albans Mall. Now, later on, after 9 and 10 o'clock, there'll be a break in the rain, and that's when the winds will settle down into the valley. In fact, by dawn, we could be near 60 degrees with the winds gusting to 30 miles an hour. That'll bring more leaves down. Tomorrow, the morning shower pattern will give way to some midday breaks to sun, though an afternoon thunder squall would follow. It's a windy and warm day and a high near 70 degrees. We should dry out on Halloween day, breezy under partly cloudy skies, just a chance of a passing shower. 50s for trick-or-treat festivities Thursday night. Friday's forecast, 50s during the day, 40s for high school football. And it's an all hollow East weekend that lies ahead over on the East End. Daytime highs will be in the 60s over the weekend with overnight lows in the 30s and low 40s. Details on the weekend forecast still to be ironed out, Amanda. All right, lots of good stuff happening with Halloween. Tony, thanks so much. A new study shows one in 14 children in this country has had a parent in jail. Let that sink in for a minute. In many cases, it speaks to the growing drug epidemic in this country. WSAZ Charleston's Bill Murray joins us now from the Huntington Newsroom. You actually spent your afternoon in jail, Bill. That I did, Amanda. You know what? Drugs and regret are the two things that everyone I spoke with today had in common. And the difficulty in understanding that their children on the outside may be dealing with real problems that stem from the fact that they are on the inside. This study finds the poor, the family, the higher that number grows. In fact, to one in nine children, if you look at that poor demographic. And parents oftentimes shun their kids. Not because they don't love them, they do, but they don't want them there because they don't want them scarred by a whole host of problems like anxiety, low self-esteem, and behavioral issues. Take a listen. So I don't let him visit and things like that because I don't, they're up old enough that they would remember this and I don't ever want my children to remember me or to see me in orange and to know that what I did was that bad that as my son calls it, that uh, I'm an adult timeout. There's some perspective for you. This study finds that, you know what, these children are often the forget forgotten victims of crime and the stigma attached with a parent being in jail is what's causing, again, these whole host of problems, Amanda. And it causes some other ones, too, the Absolutely. need for foster families and grandparents who are really trying to bridge that gap. It's not an easy job. All right, Bill, thanks. School systems around our region have identified this problem. Many have efforts to ID the problem and tackle it so the child is not left behind. We'll be right back. Some people around here seem a little happier, like Honda Civic owners. They jumped online and discovered Civic is a 2015 ABB Best Buy Award winner and gets 39 MPG. Not Cruise, not Sentra, but Civic. So not only is the zero down lease payment attractive right now, but down the road, Civic is the smart choice. No wonder Honda is the most trusted brand and the smart way to go. See your Tri-State Honda dealer. He saved us from bankruptcy. He saved the Greenbrier. He saved our jobs. The first thing Jim Justice did was give back our health and pension benefits. He invested in us. He's created hundreds of new jobs. Good paying jobs. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Jim, for believing in us. Thanks for believing in West Virginia. He's done so much for the Greenbrier. 
Imagine what he could do for the state. I'm tired of our state being last in everything. I'm Jim Justice. What I've done for the Greenbrier, I can do for the state of West Virginia. I have breast cancer. This is my family. I have so much to live for. That's why I turned to this hospital for treatment, support, for hope. The Edwards Comprehensive Cancer Center, where knowledge meets hope. I have cancer, but cancer doesn't have me. I'm a fan of this plateau. I'm a fan of things that go. I'm a fan of fan conventions. I'm a fan of releasing tension. I'm a fan of all things shelty. When it comes to snacking. I'm a fan of hot and melty. I'm a fan of DQ. I'm a fan of DQ bait. Three new oven hot snacks like the buffalo chicken snack melt, chicken bacon barbecue, and chicken quesadilla. Served only at your DQ. This is fan food, not fast food. I'm a fan. This sports segment brought to you by your West Virginia Toyota dealers. Visit buyatoyota.com. Keith is into check sports and the land of the blue turf, the Smurf turf, comes a calling. <laughs> well, you know, for good or bad reasons, people have kind of separated yeah. the group of five and the power five schools. Right. And yeah. so the group of five figures better play okay. the best in our division we'll or it. whatever you want to call it. All year long uh, last season, Boise State and Marshall mentioned in the same sentence as to which team would grab the access bowl bid, that one big bowl opportunity given to the so-called group of five teams. Problem was it was all subjective because teams don't play each other. Well, they're about to. Boise State and Marshall have agreed to a home-and-home -home series beginning in 2019 in Boise, and the Broncos returned the trip to Huntington in 2020. They've only played one time before, and that was back in the Division I AA playoffs in 1994. Routinely mentioned as two of the best teams in the group of five, why not tangle? It's, it's going to be cut and dry. If we got the ability to go beat Boise and they're the top team in that league, then there's a pretty good chance we're going to get where we want to go. And Cincinnati's one of the top teams in, in, the, in that league. And, and if you look at the things, it's kind of us and the American Conference and the Mountain West are, the, are kind of the ones the last couple of years that's been in existence that are competing for that slot. And I think, it's, I think Mike Hamrick has done a tremendous job with schedule. Speaking of Mike Hamrick, here's what he said, quote, our goal is to play in the Access Bowl, and to do that, you have to play and beat the best from the group of five conferences. Boise fits that mold, end quote. West Virginia with another tough road game this week. Thursday night gathering in Fort Worth, Texas against number five TCU. Some numbers on the Frogs, 7-0 this year, 4-0 in the Big 12, averaging 50 points per game, giving up 27. Dana Hogerson says they're getting better players because the whole state of Texas is going that way. Baylor and TCU used to be afterthoughts in the state of Texas when it came to recruiting. I was at Texas Tech for eight years and Houston and Oklahoma State and, and they, they were going elsewhere, but now they're going there, which, yes, obviously makes it even harder to be able to recruit. And then you, the SEC is coming in there a lot more, too. High school football rankings out in West Virginia for the week. Class AAA Midland uh, stays put at number one. No surprise. Point still right behind at number two. Capitals fourth. Huntington seventh. GW nine. Spring Valley 13. South Charleston tied at 14. Class AA Bridgeport barely eking out Tulsa for the top spot. Mingo Central sixth. Chapmanville's ninth. Herbert Hoover tenth. And Roan County is 12. Class Single A Magnolia number one. Buffalo's number four. Man number eight. Tug Valley is ninth. Williamstown 10 and the Van Bulldogs at number 14. Don't forget the World Series starts tonight, the Fall Classic. It'll be Matt Harvey for the Mets against Edinson Volquez of the Kansas City Royals. The game's supposed to start at 8 o'clock. We'll try to get you highlights, but no guarantee. You know how that goes. And also, blue-white scrimmage. That will happen at Rupp Arena, 7 o'clock. Cats have six scholarship newcomers. So for uh, John Calipari, a bunch of guys that he's going to watch for the first time, we'll have highlights of that one for you coming up at 10 and 11. Tim, Tony, and Amanda, back after this. Named one of the best lawyers in America, Andy Bashir successfully managed teams of lawyers on behalf of his clients, from average Kentuckians to small businesses to large corporations. As Attorney General, Bashir's only client will be the families of Kentucky. But Whitney Westerfield? He sued average people on behalf of payday lenders and debt collectors. Westerfield took advantage of vulnerable Kentucky families during tough economic times. The record shows Whitney Westerfield is not on our side. Would you build a better cancer center? Oh, you'd start with a team of highly trained and experienced physicians and nurses and the latest state-of-the-art technologies. 
Next, add support services, financial counseling, and an office of the American Cancer Society right in the building. Then finish with a specially trained on-site oncology pharmacist. Of course, there's no need to build it because we already have it. The Cancer Center at SOMC. Very good things are happening here. Drive impaired in West Virginia, you break the law and endanger the lives of others. Law enforcement across the state is committed to keeping impaired drivers off the road. If you drive impaired, be prepared to pay the price. There are consequences. It's simple, West Virginia. Drive sober or get pulled over. I registered Republican at 18 years of age. I've uh, been a Republican my entire life, but not this time. Matt Bevin's a big businessman. They didn't pay his taxes. Uh, I hear Matt Bevin also says one thing one day changes it to something different the next. So you never know what Matt Bevin's actually going to be doing. In the small town where I'm from, we don't have big business. We have honest people. I don't think he's looking out for the people of Kentucky. I think he's looking out for Matt Bevin. This is a really important election for Kentucky, but I just can't vote for Matt Bevin. Read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition. One last look at dual Doppler radar shows a sea of green, especially from I-64 north. We're in the drink for several hours. But note how as you go south of I-64, there's a little break in the rain trying to form down toward Hazard and Jackson, Kentucky. And that'll be in here later on this evening. Plan on showers through 9 o'clock and then after 9, a break in the rain. And what's going on with the temperature? It's rising 58 midnight, 60 tomorrow morning. Tomorrow, some showers and a midday thunder squall. We'll have a lot of leaves coming down. It's windy and warm. We'll hit 70, if not 75 degrees. It'll feel like spring here in the middle of fall, guys. It sure will. I don't know if I'm ready for all the leaves to start coming down yet because it's still so gorgeous out there. All right, it's well, here's, here's an idea. Then you could head okay. down to Pigeon Forge and, oh. you know, just, all you have to do is just keep heading south and you can okay. enjoy the leaves step by step. I'm going to use your, your vacation days, though. <laughs> yeah. Is that all right? I don't okay. think Phil's going to allow that. Uncle Phil is not very good about that. Phil, if you're watching, send us a text. Have a He's good night. He's probably asleep. <laughs> probably. <laughs> good night. Test bed. Career politician Jack Conway is a rubber stamp for Obama's liberal agenda. He's for Obamacare, just like Obama. He's for gun restrictions, like Obama. He's pro-abortion, like Obama. He's anti-coal, just like Obama. Conway even voted for Obama, twice. Jack Conway would be Obama's governor. Matt Bevan is a Christian conservative, a veteran, and small business owner. Matt Bevan will be Kentucky's governor. Every day, around the clock, 24-7. Hundreds of Thomas Health System doctors, nurses, and staff are focused on making quality care and wellness our utmost priority for you and your family. Each one of us is personally committed to your optimal health and well-being. Thomas Memorial Hospital and St. Francis Hospital. Your trusted, personal choice for a lifetime of good health. Whitney Westerfield wants to be Attorney General, but as an attorney for the Commonwealth, he was reprimanded for letting his personal interests take priority over work. Whitney even got caught skipping court to get a pedicure. Maybe that's why he made so many plea deals with drug traffickers and violent criminals, letting them off the hook with no jail time and leaving more time for Whitney. Whitney Westerfield, just wrong for Attorney General. A pitcher who can paint the corners is known as a Rembrandt. At GMC, we get why people love that kind of precision. After all, that's exactly what we deliver. This is precision. This is GMC. Now get one year of Sirius XM satellite radio. Plus get 5,500 cash back on select Sierra 1500 double cab models in stock the longest. See your tri-state GMC dealer. There is developing news tonight. The FBI investigation into a classroom body slam caught on camera. An officer under fire for violently throwing a female student to the ground. What we've learned about that shocking moment. There is a new front runner in the Republican race for president. Ben Carson surges past Donald Trump in a new national poll. A big shakeup at the top on the eve of a critical debate. Dangerous tires, a major new government alert about millions of cars and trucks being driven right now 
all across the country. A hidden risk so many drivers don't even know about. And Black Friday backlash. A major chain store says its doors will be closed on one of the busiest shopping days of the year. Why they're doing it and will other stores follow suit? Nightly News begins right now. Headquarters in New York. This is NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Good evening. Once again, cell phone video and the internet have made us all bystanders to the gritty and sometimes ugly side of police work. But many who have seen it are wondering if what the camera captured inside a South Carolina high school classroom went far outside the line of duty. An apparently uncooperative student thrown to the ground by a school resource officer. A case that has now triggered a federal civil rights investigation. NBC's Gabe Gutierrez is in Columbia with the tape and the story behind it. It's 10.30 Monday morning, math class at Spring Valley High School. School resource officer Ben Fields is called in to confront a student. Witnesses say she had not been participating in class, had taken out her phone, and refused to leave when the teacher asked. The confrontation escalates while other students watch silently. While she's still sitting at her desk,